Uh, they, the reason why I wanted to hear um, Simon talk about this this huge problem they had in Ishpeon, if you've heard a little bit, he said um, it took, basically he said they, they, they told everyone what the, the problem was about all the, uh, the mothers that were giving birth and then they were dying after they gave birth. Um, they, they identified that the problem was um, that the doctors were doing autopsies in the morning, and they were washing their hands and they were delivering the babies in the, in the afternoon. And Oliver Wendell Holmes said, this is the problem, and no one listened for 30 years <laughs> until, they, until they finally said, we need to do that, and then the problem went away. And I thought that's just something to kind of share, because I, um, sometimes when I, I share these talks, and I'm going to say it again today, the part of um, our work is to hopefully make sure that 30 years from now, we're not in the same place we are today. And so you're going to hear me say that over and over again, because I, I, I've retired from the department after more than 30 years, but the problems we had 30 years ago are still the problems that we have today. So you're going to talk about that. Okay, um, I passed out some handouts and I'm, uh, I actually didn't expect very many people to be here. <laughs> but I, I think I, I, I really, um, added on the presentation. Um, they asked me about a week ago to do this. So, you know, I, it was a, a weak moment and I said yes. <laughs> I spent the whole week trying to uh, prepare for this. But, um, so I thought, I, I looked at the numbers, the conference, I said, I saw many speakers, I said, I think we'll get maybe 10 or 15 people. And so I, I, I did bring about 30 or 40 handouts, so I'm hoping you have the handouts. Uh, but what you should have is um, a handout that has like a picture of a GPS or a Google Maps on the front uh, that I'll refer to. Uh, you should also have a color front and back sheet that says uh, implementation plan. So hopefully um, you all got a copy of that. Yes. And then, and then if you, I, I know I don't have as many copies of the blueprint, but if you didn't, if you already have a copy of the blueprint and somebody doesn't have it, please uh, pass it on. But I brought copies of the blueprint, and so you will have. Uh, three of the four documents that I'll be talking about. And the fourth one, it was just not possible to provide for you. I can provide that for you digitally, but it's um, 130 pages long, the, um, the state has to plan. Okay? So, uh, let me um, kind of just jump right in here. Um, I'm hoping that we finish early. That's really the goal. <laughs> it's, uh, I might try to move through things quickly. So just maybe time for a discussion or just time for you to relax. But um, my, by the way, this is my wife, the Nicola. She's a principal at uh, Monolo Elementary School. <coughs> and she's helping me here. <laughs> she usually helps me, so. <laughs> uh, first, let me, let me ask you. Um, how many of you here are, um, I, I see a lot of educators, but how many of you are parents? Okay, great. Um, teachers, how many teachers do we have? Great. Uh, principals, I know we have a number of principals. Okay, good. Um, any students? I, actually, if I saw that, I saw the bad. Okay, good. Okay, and then um, other community members and so forth. Okay, good. <coughs> and, how many of you have um, heard or have, have any of you attended a model schools conference on the mainland? Some of you? You've heard Dr. Daggett speak before? Okay, great. Because um, uh, this, this message or this presentation is very much tied to his work. Uh, my, my first uh, opportunity to hear Dr. Daggett at my first model schools conference was in 2007. And I've attended 
every year since. I met him just once, but it's, it's, it's a regular, that's my biggest professional learning, professional growth activity I'm doing here, because there's nothing better. And if you, you've heard and if you enjoy listening to this passion, um, you, can, you can go to see him in Orlando this year, and he's just one of a whole team of amazing speakers and educators uh, inspiring. Okay, um, <clears throat> the uh, title of the presentation is called Crosswalks and Traffic Lights and Roadmaps. Um, the unofficial title is like what I said earlier, will our journey for the next 30 years lead us to the same destination? Or, I thought about this as a title. <laughs> and, and I wanted to share um, a couple of um, uh, stories with you about you know, about this idea of how we you know, use technology and Google Maps and GPS to try to find our way. And I, because, you know, I, I said I'm going to create a crosswalk, I, I came up with this theme that, okay, we can tie everything to this idea of crossing the street, getting to where we want to get to, getting to our destination. Okay? What is that destination? This is my family. So I'm a real human being. <laughs> my wife Linda and Aaron. My son Sean just got married. He's a teacher in Korea. So I'm really proud of him. He won't come home. I'm trying to get him home. He's been there for about three years now. But uh, we, uh, Linda and I, just came back from Korea, uh, attending his wedding. And um, my new, very proud of my new daughter-in-law, Claire. So. Um, People think like, all I do is like work and I don't have <laughs> This is my real family too. This is the year of the dog. And the Galera home is the home of the dogs. So uh, this is who we take care of after the, the boss of the house and, and every hotel. So um, uh, these are very, really great dogs. <laughs> the big one is called Gracie. Um, the brown one is called Chewy, and the little one is called Puppy. <laughs> we, we hit a blank there. <laughs> um, for those of you, if we haven't met before, um, uh, I, I retired from the department. I've done like many, many things. Couldn't keep a job and kept moving all around. Um, and I did want to say, and I'll talk about this later, that um, at one of high school, um, and I have Julia Tuyama here, and there might be some other team members here. But um, Model High School was, was selected as a national model high school in 2011. And so we presented, representing Hawaii in Nashville, Tennessee, at the National Model School Conference. So my, uh, my affinity and connection with the great work that they did here and goes, goes way back. OK, so here's the theme. And where are we headed? What are the tools to get us to our destination? What more needs to be done to reach our destination? <clears throat> and so, um, this is, before we jump into the handouts I gave you, this is the key. Because I think we have, we have um, many, many, many destinations that people tell us to go to. As teachers in the classroom, as principals in the schools, as leaders in the complex area, and so forth. You know, one of the questions I'll be asking you is: So, how does this affect you? You know, is this working? How? You know, what can you do to kind of help with that? <clears throat> and so, this idea about knowing your destination. I, I said I was going to share a quick story. Um, so, my, my my first GPS story is this: I was. Um, I had retired and then I was hired by Achieve 3000. Many of you have Achieve at your school. So I was, a, I was hired as a state uh, implementation director. And so what they said is I had to fly to New Jersey in the office and I had to um, complete the training. We did most of the training online, but then the rest of the, the final week had to be face to face. This was real performance based training. You can't, no test that they, you got to stand and deliver. Okay, so I went, I did a whole week. Um, when I first got there, it was during the day, I landed in Newark, 
Liberty Airport, and then I had to get to Lakewood, New Jersey, which I've never been to New Jersey before. So I put on my GPS and I plucked it in. I, I arrived during the midday. It was about an hour's drive. Everything was perfect. I just I listened to that voice and turn here, turn here. And I got to the office, did my training, got to the hotel, and everything was fine. After a week, I had to come back home. I said, OK, I've got to make it back to the airport, and then I'm fine. I can come back to Hawaii. <clears throat> but I don't know why. I think I was kind of worried that maybe something might, might not go wrong. So I left early. I left like five hours before I needed to be at the airport. And I thought, I don't know why I just need to do that. So I turned on the GPS again, and when I left, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, so it was dark. And I started following the GPS, and turn here, turn here. And I just kept driving, and driving, and driving. And you know, when I first came up, it took an hour to get there, but I was way past that. I was like an hour and a half, or foot. I'm like, I'm not sure what's, what's happening here. But then I went over this bridge, and then there's this huge sign that said, Welcome to the state of Delaware. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so I looked for the first day, I ended up going to this traffic stop, you know, where all the truckers go. And then I told them, I'm trying to get to New York. They looked at me and they laughed like, you're not even close, like you're in another state now. But anyway, they helped me, the human beings <laughs> helped me to find my way back. I made it just in time to get to the TSA line and get on board my plane. So my first experience with this, this thing about where are we going and let's, let's have these directions, whether they're road maps or GPS, to get you there. Um, it, it didn't work for me. I, I, didn't, I don't think I even told my wife the story. <laughs> I made it back to Hawaii okay, but that was a really stressful experience for me. And I share that to think about like maybe what we're doing here with all the stuff that we have in front of us. Okay? So what about our destination here? What, what is it? Let me... I really wanted you to hear this, but we'll see if this works. Or imagine we're standing in this big empty room, right? And we're standing in one corner, and I give you a simple instruction. I want you to go to that corner in a straight line, right? Not big deal, no big deal, right? Without telling you, I slip a chair in front of you. What do you do? You go around the chair. Now you just disobey what I told you to do. I told you to go to that corner in a straight line. But this is the amazing thing about human beings, which is when we're given a clear destination, we use our own creativity and our own sense of innovation and our own problem solving ability to overcome obstacles to get to the destination. In other words, the destination is more important than the route. Right? We're flexible about the route. We're obsessed with the destination. Reset. We're standing in the corner together and I give you some construction. Go somewhere in this room in a straight line. And you say to me, where do you want to go? I'm like, I don't know. You're smart, figure it out. Go in a straight line. And so you pick a point and you start walking. And without telling you, I put a chair in front of you. What do you do? Come to a grinding point. I say, what'd you stop for? You go, we put a chair. Or you'll make a sudden turn and go in another direction. Right? And this is the problem. It's the same obstacle. The difference is when you have a clear set of a clear destination, the obstacles become easy to overcome. When you don't have a clear destination, it keeps you from grinding pole. And what we do in our companies is we're counting the steps we're taking along the route, but we're never looking at the destination. Right? So company says, made a million dollars this year, we were only planning on making eight hundred thousand. We took ten steps, we weren't planning on taking eight. Where are you going? No clue. Right? We count the steps. And so the point is, is that people want to feel that the effort that they're exerting actually are moving somewhere. And so successful measurement, successful recognition is not just for the steps you take. It's not just for the effort. It's that the effort you exerted moved us closer to where we're trying to get to. Or imagine we're... <clears throat> Figure out this thing. So Simon says, we're counting the steps. We're taking a longer route, but that we're never looking at the destination. And, and so it's this idea of this clarity of the destination that I think it needs to be, you need to have, like, it needs to be crystal clear. What are we talking about? 
And he says, when you have a clear destination, easy to overcome the obstacles. But it's, it's that idea of the clarity of the destination. So, you know, the question, we had time to discuss this, I'd say, so what do you think is our destination? And even this morning, we heard a lot of different things. <clears throat> is it, our destination is we're going to be the top education system in the nation? Is it, our destination is to have the schools that we deserve? This is a great publication by um, HSTA. Uh, is our destination Finland? You heard um, Ken this, this morning. Hawaii can out Finland, Finland. <laughs> As I said at the beginning, is it to be in the same place 30 years from now? Okay, so I'm going to offer, and again, if you if you um, understand the, um, the the wisdom of um, Dr. Dagan and of the ICLE, when we talk about whether we're trying to be the best, whether we're trying to be like Finland, whether we're trying to get anywhere else, the the the, the real key is what happens in each classroom. So it doesn't matter what your great plans are. And so when he talks about rigor, relevance, and relationships, if Hawaii achieved the status of, getting a, of having rigor, relevance, and relationships in every classroom, there's nobody that would touch us anywhere. So I'm offering that as the destination we're going to talk about today, just tying it into the conference, that that is the key. And as if you were in um, Dr. Dennis' last session, he says, remember, don't look at the order of the phrase. He said, remember, it starts with relationships. That gets you to relevance, and then that gets you to rigor. For the leaders in the room, um, I can go on and on about how rigor, relevance, and relationships is all about leadership and everything about leadership. You begin with relationships because that's the culture. That's the culture of your school. That's the culture of your organization. That's everything you have to start with first. When you, as a leader, once you establish relationships and the culture, then you can get to relevance. And relevance, in the leadership terms, means you have to be a change leader. The only way you continue to be relevant is you change with the times and you keep up. And so relevance in leadership is all about understanding change, making change happen. And rigor in, in, in the uh, framework of a leader is all about higher level critical thinking and great decision making in the service of students. So rigor and relevance and relationships is about the classroom, it's about leadership, it's about everything that we should be focused on. <clears throat> okay, I didn't know what the title of this slide, so I just put plans, plans, and more plans. And uh, let me uh, do a quick question. How many of you are familiar with the four plans that I'm talking about today? How many of you are familiar with that? Okay, how many of you, quite a number, how many of you like have no clue? Like, I didn't even know there was a plan. <laughs> okay, so there, it's okay. So, um, remember to like stop me if you have a question because I would assume that um, there's some basic understanding about these four plans. Okay, so there, there, are, four, there are four plans that um, we have in front of us. If you're a teacher in the classroom, if you're a principal at the school, you, part of the system or working somewhere around the school, the school councils or whatever it might be, there are four major, huge plans. And they're not old plans, they're all new. Every single one of them. Okay? The Hawaii Blueprint for, for Public Education is, <clears throat> is what um, the governor, um, 
took advantage of because the federal government passed the ESSA law, the Every Student Succeeds Act law. That law said it was a dramatic change from what we were doing. They said, stop. We need to empower the states, empower the schools, and now we're going to give every state the opportunity to transform everything they're doing. Okay, so it was a big, big change. And Governor Ige said, we're going to take advantage of this by coming up with a shared vision of, of what Hawaii wants for education. And so Steve Persegi is part of our team here. Phil Boston is part of our team. Um, Catherine Ping, I guess I'll check out Catherine, is part of our, the governor's team. Um, 19 volunteer members working over two years, all volunteer. Uh, we flew across the state three times to every island, engaging thousands and thousands of, of people across Hawaii to find out and listen to what people wanted. And so the blueprint is, I think, unprecedented in listening to what Hawaii's people wanted, the students, the teachers, principals, the parents, for what we wanted for education, and we put it together. And the blueprint was meant to be a vision. It was meant to be an aspiration. It was meant to guide the way, get us to the North Star. This is what the people of Hawaii want. Okay, so that's the blueprint. So you'll see um, three, focus er three focus areas, many, many design principles, and lots of things. And in fact, the people of Hawaii were involved in writing in these things that we still do. The Hawaii Board of Ed, Department of Ed Strategic Plan, at the same time that the governor had this ESSA team going, the, the Board of Ed and the DOE said, we're going to renew our strategic plan. Okay. And so they worked really, really hard. They involved many people. They went all. They spent an equal amount of time talking about what are the specific goals and objectives that we have to look at. Okay. So it was a very impressive effort. Uh, it was a parallel effort as we were talking about the big vision and the, the aspirations. The uh, department was also working through and creating this new strategic plan. <clears throat> Um, and I, I do want to share something really important because sometimes I hear things being said by different people. Like, why are these things, you know, separate and different and so forth? Um, the reality is we work very, very closely together, okay, between the governor's team and the Department of Education. In fact, we had, uh, we got to the point where we had three full day meetings on Saturdays with the Board of Education, the superintendent, her leadership team, the governor's SA team members, the governor himself sat there, and three long Saturdays to align, to work together, collaborate. And so these are not separate things, you know, these were these were really done closely in partnership. Okay. The third plan, which I provided a copy for you, is um, the the new implementation plan. And so this is a nice one that's colored front and back. And uh, if you haven't seen this, I think it's something you gotta stop and you gotta look at. Now I'll talk about this in greater detail, but this is um, thanks to the great work of Superintendent Kishimoto, that she, she came up with, again, this, 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 this plan of three focus areas, okay? To look at for implementation. School design, student voice, and teacher collaboration. And then under each, you will see the high leverage items that are available. The fourth plan, and you just heard uh, this morning, the governor and superintendent announced this, that um, it's called every state had to create a state plan for education and send it in to the US Department of Education to be approved. So this was something separate. And so it's called the Hawaii Consolidated State Plan. And, and again, because of the federal government, there were parameters and things to follow. Um, and there are two things. There are things to follow and to be compliant with, but there are also things to provide new opportunities as a state to transform your education system. Okay, so that's, those are the four plans. Um, 
when you put it on, put them all together, and try to put it in front of a school principal or a school teacher, classroom teacher, who is like trying to teach your class. Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll ask you how how do you feel or how do you think, and some of you who are working in the schools and so forth. Let, let me stop there. If there's any questions about any of these plans, what each of the each of them represent or what they are. No? Anyone want to offer like um, any initial um, uh, thoughts about how this affected you at your schools once you saw all these things come down? Is it thumbs up? Everything is good? Questions are or, or maybe they didn't come to your school, you didn't see them. Yes, in the back. So I work with schools out on the Wine Night Coast. I'm with the university, yes. and I'm just actually glancing through this blueprint. Yes. And it's actually very, it's encouraging. It's, I mean, I underlined a couple things, recognizing that um, there's too much time spent on testing, and wondering if, uh, additionally, it should be determined whether testing needs to occur in grades three through eight, as currently done, and whether or not there should be sampling rather than having every single student tested. Because when you test every single student, every single student doesn't get feedback that's helpful, you know, to improve learning. So, and the, to, we believe it's time to reconsider our commitment to SBAC. It's like, wow. Those are significant. And again, uh, again, speaking for our team members here, what you see there is reflective of what we heard, Bernstein, in every community we went to. The teachers, the principals, the parents, we heard the similar messages you know, about you know, what you're reading. There. So in that sense, we're just conveying to you what um, was communicated back to us. Okay. But thank you for sharing that. And so I'll just make one more thing. Yes. Because what I was going to ask some questions about the assessment because when you talk about closing the achievement gap and the way the, the testing currently goes, it still puts a lot of pressure on those high poverty, low resource communities to raise their scores as opposed to the responsibility of anybody else. So this sounds, so then, then those schools are under so much pressure, and they still spend a lot of time in test prep, which, which deprives the children of more enriching um, experiences that are really going to add more yes. to their capability to learn. So if, if this is really what's going to happen, is this really what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> So, is this going to happen? Uh, you heard the governor this morning his message, message say, you know, this is about the blueprint, and this is a vision we have. This is where we want to get to. Um, you know, maybe you know, the biggest regret I might have about the blueprint and the process is we, we did the whole thing for free. There was like, you know, very little money or nothing really spent on the blueprint. Uh, so, you know, I, I wish we had like a huge marketing campaign to get it out to the schools and we could print up a million copies and get it out. You can see how stingy I am with the copies and <laughs> so forth. But um, we, we, are, we have been going around and trying to get the word out that we have this blueprint that everybody knows about it, so that we read about it. Let me, uh, I'm going to come up to hopefully discuss this later, but if you're not aware, the federal ESSA law states in it that they will allow seven states, okay, only seven, to apply for an innovative assessment pilot. Okay, if you read the blueprint, I forgot what page 17 or 18, it says our vision in the blueprint is that Hawaii will be one of the seven states to apply or will elect to apply to be part of the pilot so we can pilot or learn more about assessments to do what's best for our kids. And we, we use a phrase in the service of learning. Um, our essay really 
quality assessment that's good for students, also good for systems. But so we learned an awful great, a lot, awful lot, and many of what we learned, much of what we learned ended up in the blueprint. So you'll see that there. So I'll come back to that later about the assessments because that's a big part that um, everybody across the state talked about. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, what I'll ask you to do, I'll skip over there, is um, you know when we talk about all the plans, you know I. Some people, some people talk about this idea that um, you know, you know, Daryl, it's not the destination; it's the journey. You just, you know, you just keep doing your best on the journey. You never get there. This, you never reach the des destination. So don't talk about the destination. And, you know, I just heard Bill Daggett talk about this in the last session. He said, you know what? You start with first. He said, come up with a 20-day plan. But he, he meant it to be short and focused so you can get to something. Um, I, I'm sharing this from um, Dan Link. You guys saw his new book? Yeah. Um, so, uh, and Dan, by the way, was a keynote speaker at last year's Model Schools Conference. And he basically delivered his keynote based on his new book here. So I, I just got this in the mail like two days ago. So um, it, it's a great, great research in talking about timing. And he, he talks about many things about education, but let me just say one thing. That, because my, one of my concerns is about having so many different plans. Okay? And sometimes when you have a long plan, you know, 2012 to 2018, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a long time. But he says the research is showing something about the timing and about the sense of urgency. So he says, what we've seen is that, and, Sense of urgency is important. This is what we're trying to get to today. Today is about sense of urgency. Like everyone, wake up! You know your office is on fire. We got to we got to change things. We got to do it now. So he says in his book that the research shows that when you have a process and a plan, that it is at the midpoint that people start to get a sense of urgency for whatever reason. Maybe they say we're running out of time or. But, so I see that as a benefit of a plan that, um, that at the halfway mark, you know, people start to say, maybe we can get this done. Um, when we reach a midpoint, he says, a mental siren alerts us, uh oh, we're running out of time. So that revives our motivation and reshapes our strategy. But again, it all depends on the plan. You know, if the midpoint of a plan, it's a six year plan, it's three years, probably not. But if it's something focused, Maybe, you know, maybe you know, good plans and good destinations will get us where we want to get to. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm also going to talk about um, this book. Anybody have a chance to read this book? Okay, this book uh, is by Tom Friedman. And it's um, Thank You for Being Late. So people who know me say, oh, that's, that's, that's you, girl. And Optimist Guide to Thrive. And it sounds like this is this 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 book about all kinds of stuff. I, I will tell you, I think this is the best education book that's ever been written in the past few years. It is like profound. Okay, and again, but you gotta take everything and you gotta apply it to education. But it is profound. So I'll be sharing a lot of things here because while we have also always been talking about, okay, we gotta change and we gotta keep up with the change. Um, Tom is is sharing that we're beyond that. It's no longer about change. It's about accelerated change. And the things are happening so fast that we see it all around us now. It is happening so fast. And if we, okay, as leaders, and so for don't, don't understand that and understand what to do, we won't, we won't be able to uh, you know, get to where we want to get to, get towards the destination. Okay, so the crosswalk. So let me tell you what we did here with this crosswalk. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so remember, um, this was um, a week ago. Okay, I got a call. You know, can you can we add? Can you do a session for us? Sure. And then we talked about different things. And I said, well, you know what I think is needed is I don't, I haven't seen it, but maybe we need it. And if any of you know this, let me know. I said maybe we need like like a crosswalk, like 
like someone needs to like look at all of these things together and see if this can help us. And and maybe it's been produced, you know, by the department or by the board or someone. But I thought this might be helpful. So of course, you know, when I say that, I thought, oh yeah, that would be good. Oh yeah, I can move it out quickly. <coughs> this was like hard, hard work <laughs> to do. So, so if you look at the crosswalk, this is what I did, okay? First of all, I, I started with the strategic plan. Okay, and you, you notice here in the handouts, I didn't give you a copy of the strategic plan because it is in the crosswalk. The entire strategic plan, every goal, every objective is in this crosswalk. It's in the second column. Okay, so if you look throughout the document in the second column, you'll see the DOEs, the board of ed's, three goal areas, and the objectives going down. Okay. Once I did, once I did that, then I went back to the blueprint. So we had to start somewhere. So I started with the strategic plan because that's that's the most. That's the most content there. And then I, I started to align the design principles from the blueprint, okay, as best as I could, according to the blueprint. Okay, so you, I mean, according to the strategic plan. So the, the left column is the blueprint design principles. The second column is the strategic plan. So you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you can kind of see if that lines up. And then in the third column, I took the implementation plan and what Dr. Kishimoto is calling high leverage action items. Okay? And I aligned it. So again, this is not official. So it's, oh, this is the official thing. No, I, this is like you know, free labor. You get what you pay for. Your Not so great. Right. I then aligned all of the high leverage items according to the strategic plan and the blueprint. And so some things are repeated, but it's all here. In parentheses in that third column, I put whether it was SD, it was um, school design, or I put TC if it's teacher collaboration, or I put SD if it's student voice. In the last column is some information I included about the Hawaii State ESSA plan that the, that the Hawaii Department sent to the federal government and that Secretary of uh, Education DeVos just approved yesterday. Okay. Now that plan is, I mean, Yes, yeah, so I'm the crazy guy. I have to read all of this and analyze and study all of the different plans. But I can answer questions if you have about that plan. But I just highlighted some of the key things because um, that goes into many, many different areas that um, actually don't align with, with what you see from the strategic plan. Okay? So I know it's a lot, but if you kind of see what's there and how it's aligned, Okay. My, my, my question to you, and this is where I'm going to stop talking and let you kind of talk with each other for a couple of minutes, is, okay, so now what? Somebody took the time and created a crosswalk for you. Remember when, they, when, you, when you're small and you got to go across the crosswalk? You say, like, the both ways, the both ways again, the carefully. So before you, you know, move past this crosswalk, that's what I'm asking you to do, kind of look carefully. I, I answered the question, how is the crosswalk developed? If you have questions about what is each column, okay? And then here's what I want to give you some time to think about. What are questions you might have? Do you have any thoughts about how to analyze this? And here, what are your observations? 
What are your insights? After looking at this, what are your suggestions, recommendations? And I said in my description, the takeaway is I wanted to get, have a chance to talk about so what? What does this mean for students, for parents, for teachers, and principals? I wanted to focus on those four groups. And I want to uh, spend as much time as I can talking about those four groups. Okay, so um, let me stop first. Any questions about what I just tried to do an overview for you? Okay, so I'm going to give you some time on your table. Kind of look at what's here. What are what are you what are your observations? What are your insights? Okay. Okay. And any thoughts about you know and objectively as you look through all of this information. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes. So pop in your tables and if you have a question, raise your hand up and around. So look at these questions and it can take a few minutes. No, uh, I, sorry for interrupting you. I forgot to add, I did add one more column, or I think I added one more column. Somewhere. Yeah, the measures. So what I did is I took the present measures from the strategic plan and the state SO report that went to the feds, because they were different. Okay? And I took what I thought was the most current measures. And I, and so whatever way I think that we are trying to measure, I included it here. And if I'm missing something and someone knows about that, let me know. But I, I tried to do my, my homework and try to listen to all that. So as a lead, as you're looking at this, you know, if I was a teacher in a classroom, and students are giving me a slip, and like, okay, so, you know, well, what do you notice? What do you, what do, you do you do you notice um, that there are a lot of things happening in certain areas? Do you notice some, that nothing is happening in other areas? Do you notice if whether or not we have measures and ways to monitor for all of the different things or or not? So I'm just asking you to kind of take a, a quick look and think about. There are many different plans that schools are responsible for, classrooms are responsible for. Okay, and so you know, what does it mean and how does it work? I have another question on the bottom here of the slide, and I'll stop talking. Will these roadmaps that I'm calling you get us to our destination? I'm arguing the destination is rigor relevance and relationships in every classroom. High powered, high performance teaching and learning in every classroom. So will these roadmaps get us to our destination? If I plug this into the GPS, will it get us there? Okay. Say a question in the back or no? Yeah. For me? Oh no no, sorry. Hi Daryl. Um, yeah. Yes. Just, just a really, really quick question, and it's actually based in your observation that Tom Friedman's book should be read by everybody in education. I've read it. Um, one of the things that Tom Friedman says is that we are rapidly moving through, if not already beyond, the achievement gap, and that now what we're looking at is the motivation gap. Yes. And so if we achieve our destination, which I fully believe we will, totally convinced that we're going to get to our Tahiti. Um, what happens in terms of the motivation gap? Because then that becomes the thing that's hardest to work on. If the opportunities are there, then it's really up to your own motivation to move yourself through all of those elements together. 
Uh, you know, my, my answer is going to be similar to what we're saying here about this idea. If we're trying to get rigor, relevance, and relationships in the classroom, this whole idea about relationships and everything we've been talking about is this idea of creating a culture of curious, motivated, um, you know, innovative students. And, and you know, we've seen this for a long time that um, we in, or look at the metrics that we have here. Are we looking for that? Are we measuring for that? If that is the key, you know, it, in the previous session, Dr. Deggett talked a whole lot about social and emotional learning as priority number one. I think it goes to the same idea of motivation and this whole idea of how we have to help our kids. So I, I don't have an answer for you, Josh, but uh, I read it. And I'm glad you, I, 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 I was thinking, if anybody read the book, it would have been Josh. <laughs> but it is a great book. It's a great book. Okay, I'm going to stop talking and let you talk on your tables for a few minutes. So I'll come back to that later about the assessments because that's a big part that um, everyone across the state talked about. <clears throat> okay, um, what I'll ask you to do, I'll skip over there, is um, you know when we talk about all the plans, you know, I some people some people talk about this idea that um, you know. You know, Daryl, it's not the destination, it's the journey. You just, you know, you just keep doing your best on the journey. You never get there, and you never reach the des destination, so don't talk about the destination. And, you know, I just heard Bill Daggett talk about this in the last session. He said, you know what you start with first? He said, come up with a 20-day plan. Okay? But he, he meant it to be short and focused so you can get to something. Um, I, I'm sharing this from um, Dan Link. You guys saw his new book? Yeah, um, so, uh, and Dan, by the way, was a keynote speaker at last year's Model Schools Conference. And he basically delivered his keynote based on his new book here. So I, I just got this in the mail like two days ago. So um, it, it's a great, great research in talking about timing. And he, he talks about many things about education, but let me just say one thing. That, because my, one of my concerns is about having so many different plans. Okay. And sometimes when you have a long plan, you know, 2012 to 2018, you know, like it's, it's a long time. But he says the research is showing something about the timing and about the sense of urgency. 
So he says, what we've seen is that, and sense of urgency is important. This is what we're trying to get to today. Today is about sense of urgency. Like, everyone wake up. You know, your office is on fire. We gotta, we gotta change things. We gotta do now. So he says in his book that the research shows that when you have a process and a plan, that it is at the midpoint that people start to get a sense of urgency, for whatever reason. Maybe they say, we're running out of time. No, okay. but, so I see that as a benefit of a plan that, um, that at the halfway mark, you know, people start to say, maybe we can get this done. Um, when we reach a midpoint, he says, a mental siren alerts us, oh, oh, we're running out of time. So that revives our motivation and reshapes our strategy. But again, it all depends on the plan. You know, if the midpoint of a plan is a six-year plan, it's three years, probably not. But if it's something focused, maybe, you know, maybe you know, good plans and good destinations will get us where we want to get there. Um, I'm also going to talk about um, this book. Anybody have a chance to read this book? Okay, this book uh, is by Tom Friedman, and it's um, thank you for being late. So people who know me say, oh, that's, that's, that's you, girl. And Optimist Guide to Thriving. And it sounds like this is this, this, this book about all kinds of stuff. I, I will tell you, I think this is the best education book that's ever been written in the past few years. It is like profound. Okay? And again, you've got to take everything and you've got to apply it to education. But it is profound. So I'll be sharing a lot of things here because while we have also always been talking about, okay, we got to change and we got to keep up with the change, um, Tom is, is sharing that we're beyond that. It's no longer about change. It's about accelerated change. And the things are happening so fast that we see it all around us now. It is happening so fast. And if we as leaders, and so if we don't, don't understand that and understand what to do, we won't, we won't be able to uh, you know, get to where we want to get to, get towards the destination. OK, so the crosswalk. So let me tell you what we did here with this crosswalk. OK? So, um, <coughs> so remember, um, this was um, a week ago. Okay. I got a call, you know, can, can we add, can you do a session for us? Sure. The and then we talked about the different things I said. Well, you know what I think is needed? Because I don't, I haven't seen it, but maybe we need it. And if any of you know this, let me know. I said, maybe we need, like, like a crosswalk. Like, like someone needs to, like, look at all of these things together and see if this can help us. And, and maybe it's been produced. You know, by the department or by the board or someone, but I thought this might be helpful. So, of course, you know, when I say that, I thought, oh, yeah, that would be good. Oh, yeah, I can move it out quickly. <coughs> this was like hard, hard work <laughs> to do. So, so, if you look at the crosswalk, this is what I did. Okay? First of all, I, I started with the strategic plan. Okay, and you, you notice here in the handouts, I didn't give you a copy of the strategic plan because it is in the crosswalk. The entire strategic plan, every goal, every objective is in this crosswalk. It's in the second column. Okay, so if you look throughout the document in the second column, you'll see the DOEs, the board of eds, three goal areas, and the objectives going down. Okay. Once I did, once I did that, then I went back to the blueprint. So we had to start somewhere. So I started with the strategic plan because that's that's the most the, the, that's the most content there. And then I I started to align the design principles from the blueprint okay, as best as I could according to the blueprint. Okay, so you, I mean according to the strategic plan. So the, the left column is the blueprint design principles. The second column is the strategic plan. So you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you can try to see if that lines up. And then in the third column, I took the implementation plan 
And what Dr. Kishimoto is calling high leverage action items. Okay? And I aligned it. So again, this is not official. So it's, oh, this is the official thing. No, I, this is like you know, free labor. You get what you pay for your own. Not so good. Okay. I then aligned all of the high leverage items according to the strategic plan and the blueprint. So some things are repeated, but it's all here. In parentheses in that third column, I put whether it was SD, it was um, school design, or I put TC if it's teacher collaboration, or I put SD if it's student voice. Okay. In the last column is some information I included about the Hawaii State ESSA plan that the, de that the Hawaii Department sent to the federal government and that Secretary of uh, Education DeVos just approved yesterday. Okay. Now that plan is, I mean, yes, I'm the crazy guy. I had to read all of this and analyze and study all of the different plans. But I can answer questions if you have about that plan. But I just highlighted some of the key things because um, that goes into many, many different areas that um, actually don't align with, with what you see from the strategic plan. Okay? So I know it's a lot, but if you kind of see what's there and how it's aligned, okay, my, my, my question to you, and this is where I'm going to stop talking and let you kind of talk with each other for a couple of minutes, is, okay, so now what? Somebody took the time and created a crosswalk for you. Remember when, they, when, you, when you're small and you got to go across the crosswalk? You say, like, the both ways, the both ways again, but carefully. So before you, you know, move past this crosswalk, that's what I'm asking you to do, kind of look carefully. I, I answered the question, how is the crosswalk developed? If you have questions about what is each column, okay? And then here's what I want to give you some time to think about. What are questions you might have? Do you have any thoughts about how to analyze this? And here, what are your observations? What are your insights? After looking at this, what are your suggestions, recommendations? And I said in my description, the takeaway is I wanted to be, have a chance to talk about so what? What does this mean for students, for parents, for teachers, and principals? I want to focus on those four groups. Okay, I want to uh, spend as much time as I can talking about this for Okay, so um, let me stop first. Any questions about what I just tried to do an overview for you? Okay, so I'm going to give you some time on your table. Kind of look at what's here. What are, what are, your, what are your observations? What are your insights? Okay. And, and any thoughts about, you know, and objectively as you look through all of this information here. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. So pop in the tables. And if you have a question, raise your hand up and move So we get these questions and we can take a few minutes. So, uh, I, sorry for interrupting you. I forgot to add, I did add one more column, or I think I added one more column. Somewhere. Yeah, the measures. So, 
What I did is I took the present measures from the strategic plan and the state ESO report that went to the feds, because they were different. Okay? And I took what I thought was the most current measures and I and so whatever way I think that we are trying to measure, I included it here. And if I'm missing something and someone knows about that, let me know. But I tried to do my, my homework and try to listen to them. So as a lead, as you're looking at this, you know, if I was a teacher in a classroom, and students are giving me a slip and they're like, OK, so you know, well, what do you notice? What do you, what do, you, do, you do you notice um, that there are a lot of things happening in certain areas. You notice some, that nothing is happening in other areas. Do you notice if whether or not we have measures and ways to monitor for all of the different things or, or not? So I'm just asking you to kind of take a, a quick look and think about there are many different plans that schools are responsible for, classrooms are responsible for. Okay, and so, you know, what does it mean and how does it work? I have another question on the bottom here of the slide, and I'll stop talking. Will these roadmaps that I'm calling you get us to our destination? I'm arguing the destination is rigor, relevance, and relationships in every classroom. High power, high performance teaching and learning in every classroom. So will these roadmaps get us to our destination? If I plug this into the GPS, will it get us there? Okay. Say a question on that? Or no? Yeah. Oh, me? Oh, no, no. Sorry. Hi, Daryl. Um, yeah. just, just a really, really quick question, and it's actually based in your observation that Tom Friedman's book should be read by everybody in education. I've read it. Um, one of the things that Tom Friedman says is that we are rapidly moving through, if not already beyond the achievement gap, and that now what we're looking at is the motivation gap. Yes. And so if we achieve our destination, which I fully believe we will, totally convinced that we're going to get to our Tahiti, um, what happens in terms of the motivation gap? Because then that becomes the thing that's hardest to work on. If the opportunities are there, then it's really up to your own motivation to move yourself through all of those elements together. Uh, you know, my, my answer is going to be similar to what we're saying here about this idea. Of if we're trying to get rigor, relevance, and relationships into the classroom, this whole idea about relationships and everything we've been talking about is this idea of creating a culture of curious motivated, um, you know, innovative students. And, and, you know, we've seen this for a long time that um, we, in, or look at the metrics that we have here. Are we looking for that? Are we measuring for that? If that is the key, you know, it, in the previous session, Dr. Deggett talked a whole lot about social and emotional learning as priority number one. I think it goes to the same idea of motivation and this whole idea of how we have to be able to help our kids. So I, I don't have an answer for you, Josh, but uh, I agree. I'm, I'm glad you. I, 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 I was thinking, if anybody read the book, it would have been Josh. <laughs> but it is a great book. It is a great book. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Let you talk in your tables for a few minutes. Oh, it just means, it just means.
difference when you when you take a, a strengths-based approach. I mean, it's huge. So you first have to engage. Okay, people have to be, you know, with you. Then you can empower. Then you can say, okay, you should be able to make choices. But the third part of the empowerment definition is this: there has to be ownership. Everyone has to feel ownership in what you're doing. If you don't feel ownership, you don't care. You just, you just do it in a mediocre way. Ownership is everything. Tom Freeman will talk at great lengths about this, this idea of ownership. And he says ownership is what leads to this idea of when you don't own something, you don't care about its future. When you own something, you care about the future. You are future focused and you are visionary because now you own what's happening. And only by being future focused and visionary do you start being willing to think about making change for the better, which is the very definition of innovation. So there's a big gap between empowerment and innovation. And if we just keep going around saying we're going to innovate, 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 without understanding the, 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 the steps we need to get there, uh, we will forever, you know, be stuck in the world. Okay, um, I I wanted you to see um, a closing video, but I'm going to go over time. So, if you have questions, uh, feel free to um, use my email and send it to me, or um, text me a message on my cell phone there. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll speak around for a few minutes. There's no other sessions in this room, so um, there won't be anybody coming in. But there are other sessions out there. Oh, I, and I'll make an announcement for Catherine. Following the final session, there's going to be a reception here in this room. So you're all invited if you want to come for refreshments and poo-poo's and drinks and so forth. Um, come, it's all going to be in this room. It's all for everyone, whoever's interested. Okay? So please do.